Southern Taiwan is an important region where the Kuroshio Current intrudes into the South China Sea on an irregular basis. This intrusion can alter the climate of the South China Sea region. This is a story of how corals are used to understand Earth's climate history. We are searching for coral colonies that are 3 to 5 meters in diameter, or roughly 300 to 500 years old. We drill through a massive coral species called Parides. We use an underwater hydraulic drill that runs on seawater pressure. The drill extracts roughly one meter at a time, and pieces of the coral are pulled out as it drills down. Working underwater is particularly challenging. It takes teamwork, coordination, and special hand signals to successfully complete the job. The corals lay down subannual bands similar to tree rings. These bands can be seen clearly in an x-ray. The chemical composition of the coral depends very heavily on the seawater in which they are growing. So as ocean circulation and climate changes, the temperature and salinity of the seawater surrounding the coral will change, thus changing the chemical composition of the coral. We also study the accumulation of chemical pollutants in the seawater. Once we have the corals back up on the ship, we have to reassemble the coral pieces together, a bit like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Once we are back on the ship, there is a lot of discussion to make sure that we are able to line the coral samples up correctly. We also collect seawater surrounding the coral so that we can have an understanding of present day conditions. Whenever you want to study something in the past, the first effort is to figure out what is happening in the present. Once we finish extracting the core, we plug the hole in the coral with cement to keep out any coral-eating animals. The Earth Observatory of Singapore and the National Marine Biological Aquarium and Museum in Taiwan are leading this project with collaborators from Lippi in Indonesia and the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the U.S. We measure the corals, dry them, and bring them back into the lab. The coral is then sliced and x-rayed, and the age of the coral is calculated by counting the density bands in the x-ray. Then we micro-drill the cores so that we get roughly 12 to 15 samples of powder for every year. We then measure the chemical concentrations in those samples. These measurements will inform the team about the temperature and salinity of the water over time and how different water bodies have mixed through changes in ocean circulation. This information is vital to understanding global climate and weather systems. After several years of painstaking chemical analysis in the lab, we are able to create century-long records of changes to climate across the ocean. 
By improving our understanding of climate in the past, we can increase our understanding of the future.